DX Central is intimidating enough on the outside. But once you cross the threshold, you enter the dingy world of bureaucratic chaos. Our chances of success were looking very slim. Tapia was not having a good time, so I decided that before it was too late, I should take him to the coast to get his first and possibly last taste of the ocean. We returned to the city to see what fate had in store, knowing that this really would have to be our last attempt. I'd been determined to beat the system, but as we entered the halls of bureaucracy once again, things seemed more ominous than ever. Oh, we've done it! We've done it! We've done it! I don't believe it! Oh, what, what happened, Dave? We've done... Um... We got it. Suddenly, it all came right, and we've got the uh, the contrabante, which is like the cedula. And tomorrow, even though the office is on strike, they've said it's a special case, and they'll give us a passport. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Somehow, we had achieved the impossible, and within 24 hours, Tapia, now a fully-fledged Venezuelan citizen, was on holiday in England. Over the hills and far away... I was worried that it would all seem a bit tame after Venezuela, but Tapir insisted that England was absolutely beautiful and full of so many incredible creatures. I had to remind myself that for the Yanomami, stalking game in the jungle is a painstaking process, so fields full of tame animals must have been like a dream come true. I knew I would have to satisfy his curiosity, so once he'd slipped into his new trainers, we headed off to the local farm. The young hunter was totally besotted. He was so at ease with these creatures, and quickly got to grips with our alien practices. She will try and drink it. <laughs> As animals were clearly such a genuine source of fascination, our next stop had to be London Zoo. Arming him with a camera so that he could keep his own record, we set off on a big game hunt. Ironically, he ended up by feeding a pair of Venezuelan macaws, which he assured the keepers would make a delicious meal. I felt he was now ready to try a bit of social interaction, so we went to visit the neighbours for supper. There was still no getting away from the animals. For someone used to a simple jungle diet, I was worried that Tapia might have problems with rich food, but he ate everything and usually came back for more. In a slightly desperate attempt to keep the entertainment flowing, I made one or two disastrous errors of judgment. These errors which are about seven foot long. So it's a... Bearing in mind that the Yanomami had very little idea of their own history and certainly none whatsoever of ours, Tapia was hardly likely to be impressed by this rather lacklustre medieval pageant. But it went deeper than that. He was getting bored of England and was feeling homesick. Even the bows and arrows here were rubbish. Fortunately, his mood quickly changed and he found there were still plenty of things here to enjoy. Any display of ineptitude on my part was a huge source of amusement. 
But whilst it was fine to laugh at my failings, he would never attempt anything new unless he felt entirely confident that he could master it. Which, of course, he usually could. Then for something quintessentially English, fish and chips on Brighton Pier. Yeah, Coca-Cola. The English seaside. <laughs> We'd been invited to go sailing and needed provisions for the voyage, so Tapia had a chance to learn some novel methods of hunting and gathering. His confidence seemed to grow and grow, and he was prepared to try his hand at virtually anything new, sometimes with amazing results. Despite not speaking a word of English, he became completely assimilated into the local scene. He did, however, confide in me that although he really liked English people, he did find them terribly tall. However, an encounter with some smaller specimens at the local primary school proved to be his undoing. The energetic young hunter was cut down in his prime. A torn ligament is bad enough in our world, but in the jungle it could render him completely helpless. I was seriously worried that he may have done some permanent damage, but the local physiotherapist felt confident that with rest and some simple exercises he would recover. <laughs> okay, Uno, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Toki Hitawa. Tapia's bizarre holiday was drawing to a close, but I needed to be certain that his leg was really better before we returned to Venezuela. So I called a Yanomami speaking friend in Caracas and asked her to quiz him about his injury. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Tapia instantly mastered the art of telephone conversation and assured Marie Claude that he felt completely recovered. <laughs> so we lost no time in getting back to some outdoor pursuits and went to visit an old friend of mine on his farm. I thought you'd like to get them with a bow and arrow. <laughs> useless bow maker. Absolutely. Ticehurst. <laughs> disgrace to the Yanomami Absolutely. tribe. Absolutely. Suddenly we found a use for my Yanomami souvenirs and Tapia was able to demonstrate his traditional hunting skills. For anyone, meeting a celebrity for the first time can be a bit unnerving. But for Tapia, Roger Daltrey was just a bloke who okay. liked fishing. You get you, you're uh, very difficult when you don't speak yet fluent Yanomami. Yeah, this is quite. <laughs> and I find that. Too. And Shepherd's Bush is not quite the same. Is it? <laughs> By chance, the Who were making a rare appearance at Wembley Arena on our last night in England, and we were both invited. Tapia would soon find himself sitting as a VIP guest in the middle of the largest crowd he could possibly imagine. 